story? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nancy Pelosi in Syria sent Tom Suicide Land uh, Lantos, the late Tom Lantos and Louise Slaughter from Rochester, New York, sent them to speak with the PKK terrorist organization and other organizations to foment trouble on the border between northern Iraq and, and Turkey so that the supply lines to you guys would be cut off. And if you remember, if you remember around that time, there was serious trouble along that border. The Turks sent a whole bunch of people there to quell it. There was a lot of very, very careful diplomacy in the background, and things were finally calmed down. That's an effort by the United States Congress to rig it so we lose a war. When has that ever happened? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. We all know the role that education plays, both good and evil. And uh, here to discuss some of that is a professor, a dedicated professor who will discuss the indoctrination of our children, the National Education Association. Please give a warm welcome to Constance Craven. Constance? that I am proud of in my life, and this sounds like Michelle Obama, and I beg you, do not hold it against me, but I am proud that my husband is a proud patriot who served in the Korean conflict. He says, that he spent more time in an army chow line than the last three presidents spent on military affairs. Please know, I am not a political activist. I do not have a political bone in my body. I am a highly tormented citizen who wakes up every day wondering what new pronouncement my government is going to give me about how I'm going to live. That's right. That's right. This current administration has said these tax day protests mean nothing. They sweep us aside saying we are a bunch of sore, losing, disgruntled Republicans. This morning on Channel 4, I heard that the President does not even know we are out here. He has he his will. own agenda. He will. Is that true? No. Hell no! I believe we are citizens who want change. We want citizens who do not want an insulated, remote government who is spending with abandon, spending our money to buy socialism. Shocking as it may seem, several polls have indicated that over 30% of our under 30 age group actually believe that socialism is the way to go. They are open to experiment. They are open to the cost in higher taxes and in loss of personal freedom. Many of them have sadly never paid income taxes. Where do these young people get these beliefs? Is it from you, their parents? Is it from grandparents? Is it from relatives who provide? the American way of life through capitalism? No. no. Then who is implicated? No. The arrow points directly at federal government run education That's and right. federal government run schools. Yes. 
you're saying, but we know the Constitution gives the responsibility of education to the states. Fifty of them. I know how many there are. And how did the federal government get their death grip on education? It goes back only to 1978. Before that time, federal involvement in education was negligible. In 1978, Bill 94-142 was passed, mandating special education in all public schools. Since this was a federal law, it was weakly backed by a small amount of money. And as soon as schools took that money, little that it was, they were had. The landscape of education was forever changed because the federal government, once it gives money, follows with policies that follows with mandates. So the under 30 crowd who accepts socialism received their education in the 80s and 90s when government could come into the K-12 venue and perform anytime they wanted civil rights audits producing thousands and thousands and thousands of documents and demanding as many remedies. I know. I was there. I had to answer to their questions. We can trace the federal government involvement in school budget dollars from 4% in 1978 to now, an amount reaching over 12%, an over three-fold increase, and more with the stimulus package. Did this cause the education of your children to be different than the one you or I received? Yes, yes it did. You better believe it did. The mandates for which we must cover in schools have tripled, quadrupled, mentioning only a few of them. Sex education, HIV virus, education uniformity, uniformity at the price of excellence, diversity, ethnicity, thousands and thousands of special education regulations and on and on. And we must dot the I's and cross the T's for them. The persistent tentacles of the feds have changed, absolutely changed the education of the under 30s. It is different and it continues to get more radical as the federal government increases its hold on teachers and administrators as well. Not only is the K-12 venue completely engorged and deluged with federal mandates, but so are colleges and universities, our life's blood to education. Many of the graduates in these places, although they do not have a label for it, believe in a social order akin to professive socialism. Let me pose a few questions, but not as many answers. Which schools get the most money?